how did I make a game in just three hours? Two things. First, planning, and second, scoping small. Okay, the video is finished, uh, roll the credits, give you like, subscribe, ring the bell, and... To the long answer. Yeah, planning and scoping small are really important when you want to make your own video games. And I just want to put a tiny addendum here because scoping small is part of planning. Right, so it's kind of like saying planning twice, but it's also really important to specify that, and you'll see why just a second. Okay, little background. There, there's this game jam called Tree Jam, and a game jam is like a competition to make games in a set amount of time, and you have to follow a theme or some weird nonsense rules. And uh, you do that to train your ability of playing games, and usually the only prize is suffering and burnout. Um, it's amazing. This game jam specifically is about making a game in about three hours, and the team was hiding the senses. So I had to start planning. And by planning, I mean watching my woman taking care of her virtual real estate, trying to think what the hell would I do. So, doing so, I decided to make a game about keeping your senses healthy enough, basically. The first thing I had to do was to know if my grandma was right when she made me eat so much onion and carrots because they make you my eyes good or something. And yeah, okay, I'll give you that, grandma. You're right. After finishing my sketch on the senses, I went to the not so important part. Gameplay. I was planning on making an action game like older Zelda games where you just run and throw your sword in front of you and boom enemy down or a top down shooting game like older flash games or I don't know how to lie my enemy or a survival game maybe waves of enemies I don't know just drawing run and stuff and spoiler alert I went through the classic Zelda like combat for some reason I stick with a pirate setting well, now you know because of the name, right? It's Sensitive Pirates. Um, then I start planning on how I was making every item drop. I had an idea on how I was making the looting system because it's similar on how I'm making another game. Well, it's actually it's kind of standard stuff, so yeah, that's the easy part. Or so I thought. Then I decided how I'm making the three developing hours. That's the planning part, that's important. So, that's the part where it gets creamy. Check my initial idea for the map. I, I knew I, I couldn't do a true immersive random map generator with infinite worlds and uh, blocky ground and you start chopping down trees then soon after you're entering a black portal and you're slaying a giant dragon like your favorite game. Yeah, that one, I, I know which one you're thinking about. Crafty. Well, no one can do that. So, for quick prototype motives, you can just do something sneaker and simpler like this. For a game gen, or for when you need to test a game idea, or if, if you want to pitch uh, your game to some dudes, and you you know they won't play your game for over two minutes because the music will hurt their ears. I was going to make uh, a few island maps and I have to code it like a 3x3 three three grid and of islands in shallow water and you have to travel through that and it would feel it kinda random because I don't know if my math is right but if I make 5 islands you could have at least 2 different layouts Possibly more than three, but I'm going to bet more than four. Okay, no, read. Really. Uh, just three islands to have, and considering you can have, have the same island more than once, in like island one being the left and island two on the right, then you have to randomize it. And uh, island one being on the right, island two on the left, you have. I don't know if I forgot some basic maths, but ignoring the water, that's over 504 possibilities. No one is playing a prototype more than 404 times. Five, 500. 
400? Four, 500. 504 times. Okay. After finishing that, I went to sleep. The next day, I took a good look into my whiteboard and realized my mistake. I can't make the game in 3 hours. So, in my mind, I started to already think of my MVP. What's an MVP, you may ask? No, that's not the guy who ends a match with 45 kills and then proceeds to open the chat only to talk specifically about the things and places him your mother enjoyed last night. No, no, no. That's the other kind of MVP. Our MVP stands for Minimal Viable Product. An MVP is basically a game that uh, works okay and plays okay, so your game is playable without game breaking bugs and you try to work a bit on the pacing, has its core features or has what to, the things that will make the actual game fun and it uh, doesn't look like straight garbage. Or maybe do if that's the thing you're going for. The MVP needs to show your target audience or your investors or your own team or even yourself how the game should feel. How it should play once you spend 7 hours developing and spending 130 million dollars to finish the game. It's a test to see, yeah, it works, it's fun, or yeah, the, this part needs changing, or even, <laughs> no, that's going straight to the trash. So I started scrapping down some stuff. Firstly, instead of a 3x3 grid of islands, I decided to make just one island at a time, because I knew I wouldn't be able to design like 10 different islands in my time. Then. To conquer an island, I decided to make just a chest with loot, because it fits the style and this way I was going to be able to reuse this health system I was planning making anyway. Well, as planned, I made a simple character controller and you can see that in your screen. It could use some cleaning, but that's just a 3 hours project. Was for movement, on fix update. That means every 0.02 seconds or 50 times per second. Not as fast as the update function. Also, the game updates the direction of the sword that is behind you by checking your mouse position on the same function. But why just 50 times per second if I paid for this really expensive 420 Hz monitor and 2 RTX 3090? You may ask. Well, I'm glad you asked. Sometimes, when making games, we try to do a little thing called performance. Every, every game, even your MVP or your prototype can benefit of a little bit of a performance improvement. By calling some of the heavy stuff that won't affect the game so badly just 50 times a second, we can make the game run even in a pregnancy test. Maybe. Then I had your stats, I mean senses, reduce over time. Also, some stats, I mean senses, get reduced more on water, as planned. That thing made a nice switch on gameplay uh, I didn't plan on. It makes the game way more fast paced and closer to the survival thing I was initially planning. So, after that I was starting making my inventory system, but... Well... Uh, it didn't really go that well. So I just ignored the inventory system and used the items assistant that I had made but instead of picking it up and putting them in a bag and having them rot in there without using anything until you, until you reach the end game and look into your bag and realize you didn't really use anything and played just hoarding items in an endless bag of no reason at all, I just made you instantly picking items you looted and have a little pop-up saying, hey you got an item, good job! Some things could be worked out, like a game manager object to hold the variables, like senses and displays, also some variable cleaning. Uh, that right here is the character script. Still, good amount of chunks of the code are ready to be used and even have some scalability potential. 
like the item system which uses crypto objects thus making it easy to create an infinite amount of items also the loot system from the enemies which make it possible for them to drop a variety of the items and even have some items with lower or higher chances of drops by changing just a few lines of code which by the way I have in another project I just didn't remember at the time and I didn't want to copy other pre-made code I mean even the character melee attack I like it it feels nice and I can imagine tweaking it for different styles of games and the stats I mean senses which affect the gameplay not completely implemented but they also have some scalability potential some effects I implemented I volume going down if you're uh, or down or up depending on your senses or you can turn in black if your sight is low but out of at least most of the original planning could be easily implemented the way I wrote the script well yeah the final product of three hours of coding is different from the initial plan but it gives us two positive points it properly shows how a finished game with all of these features would play or mostly at least and by planning beforehand in scoping small it was possible to make a prototype or MVP of a Zelda like in just three hours of coding that should be enough to ship back to your friend who keeps talking about how their game idea is so groundbreaking and it's the best thing ever and you just need a bit of planning and three hours of code to show them how terrible of an idea it is or well you can use the planning and three hours of coding to train your coding skills or even to check if your dream game is going to be fun or trash it's a great test